And welcome to a steady 3D edition, well, not really, of Archive Thrifting. Well, it's coming up on Halloween again here, so you know what that means, right? Yep, I'm probably staring down the barrel of yet another showdown with the emergency alert bot. But until that time comes, I've got a solid 21-22 minutes worth of thrifting footage to unload here, so let's not waste any more time at the box. Let's go buy some crap. Let's start off with a visit to a Goodwill I haven't been to since before I moved here. Largely because I've never found anything here. Let's see if that changes. Mixed in with the books, I found a stack of especially clean 8-tracks. So probably my favorites of this lot would be The Brothers Johnson and Nicolette Larson. So let's take a look here. And it appears to be a club issue. As does the Nicolette Larson tape. You know what? I think I've just stumbled onto somebody's ten tapes for a penny. Call it a hunch. Found an apparently unused, probably fake leather, VCR cover, probably from the early 80s, and it appears to be for top loaders. So of course I had to take it out and size it, and I think my one and only top-loading Betamax is too tall for this thing. I would have totally picked it up otherwise. Found a stray blank basic Type 1 cassette, which was unmarked for price, and I've got a ton of them already. But uh, yeah, just to give you a look around, this place has always looked like this. Depressing. Now, this is actually the first time I've ever encountered audio cassettes here, and uh, it looks like the case of that one got a little messed up. But anyway, there are some reasonably interesting looking ones here. Let's see, here's a rather terrible looking Christmas album. I guess I need to start loading up on Christmas stuff, because I have no idea what I'm covering this year. At the very least, I'll hear how they probably mangled rocking around the Christmas tree, and... Looks like there's at least one original in there, too. Russ and Becky Jeffers, Russ and Becky's favorites, which appeared to be a bunch of then-semi-recent country and pop-rock oldies and the odd gospel tune. I'll take it. Anyway, this appears to be the entire Halloween section, so, uh, uh, yeah, I had to check out this pair of kids' butterfly wings with little skulls attached. A little clash in tone there. But otherwise, I found what I thought was one of those small dress hats, but it appears to be the world's smallest witch hat, and it's velcroed to half the other stuff in there. Yeah, little cluster frick going on here. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have just witnessed history. I actually bought something here. I got four audio cassettes, all archive candidates. We've got Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree, the Memories, We've Been Everywhere, I don't remember those guys at all, Russ and Becky's Favorites, and lastly, The Hammer Sisters, Pickin' and Singin' in the Parlor. Looks like a winner to me. Moving on to Savers, and the Ghost of Its Old Sign. Seriously, it looks more dystopian to me every time. Big audio cassette selection today. And, well, uh, Justin Wilson, we know that name, don't we? Otherwise, a whole lot of cheap-looking tapes, uh, well, except for one, The Beatles' Abbey Road, with the first songs of Side 1 and 2 transposed. Yeah, I've already got this one on CD and vinyl, so might as well complete the trinity. Above a whole stack of Jeff Foxworthy tapes, we've got something called Bear Tracks by one Kurt Braffitt Braffet. I have no idea what the significance of collar is. But this appears to be Kurt's demo tape. 
Between the presumptive artist pick, the misspellings, and song titles like Pickin' Up Strangers, I've gotta hear this one. And for a bonus, the cassette artwork is a sticker. He's got a Dave's World email address, and the record tabs are still intact. Hopefully this hasn't been taped over. Now, don't get bent out of shape here. I've already got that TV tunes tape. But anyway, we already had Stars on 45 and Stars on LP, so why not Rock Stars on LP? But this appears to be just an oldies compilation. And not a terrible looking one, but I've already got most of these songs. Anyway, we've got Lyle Beaver and the Brass Notes. How I love those old songs, and <laughs> they aren't kidding. Mostly early 20th century Tin Pan Alley stuff here. Then I found a dodgy looking early Rod Stewart tape here, and... They weren't kidding. I think these are all Steam Packet songs. So, before Jeff Beck and before the faces. Now, I used to see these old-time radio tapes all the time at the bookstore, and I've actually got two of them. Now, I'm not positive, but I think these may be part of an old The Shadow boxed set. I know I've seen these somewhere before. Anyway, found a Pure Prairie League compilation, and talk about a cheap, crappy compilation. This is all but one of the songs from their Bustin' Out LP, presented out of sequence, with Falling In and Out of Love and Amy separated. A sin in and of itself. And featuring a picture of a later band lineup on the cover. Aside from that, I found one from one Thomas Goodlunas. It appears to be some sort of hybrid Native American New Age thing. I wound up passing on this one. Now, this looks right up my alley. Jerry Slegger, Slegger, the one-man band, variety pack number one. An old cowboy with an accordion and a whole bank of synthesizers. Oh, this just looks awesome. Otherwise, a genuine thrift store staple, Winona Judd's self-titled album, which I admittedly already have on CD, but if you've heard the big hit from that one, you've already heard all the good stuff. But anyway, a mostly mediocre-looking VHS selection today. Tons of 90s stuff. But I did find one thing I recently discussed on a Ben's Junk. I mentioned I used to rent The NeverEnding Story 2 just for the box office bunny cartoon before the feature. Now, I would have picked this up, but it was missing the main label on the tape, and it wasn't anywhere to be found in the box. This tape is not rare, so I think I'm just going to hold out for a better copy. Now, normally I wouldn't give this one the time of day, but Norm MacDonald, who appears in this, had just died a few days before I shot this footage, so I just had to pull it out as a little tribute to the old chunk of coal. Otherwise, I used to have this very issue of this movie as a little kid. Don't remember a damn thing about the movie, but it sat on my bookshelf until I was in high school. Wait, you mean the little Jesus fishies don't come already attached to mediocre 90s cars? But uh, anyway, this fooled me. Scotch retaping tape, which I initially interpreted as some kind of repair kit. Uh, you know, leader and or splicing tape, but uh, no, it's allegedly extra thick tape stock meant to withstand constant reuse. Now, see, in my mind, I would be using something like that to record on once and hoping that the tape would preserve well. And the other tape in the pack is just a cheap Chinese blank, but yeah, I'll pick it up just for the scotch tape. Anyway, does this qualify as odd wear? So this is an Earthlink mail station dedicated email device. Thing is, this predates Wi-Fi. This thing is from O2. So you're still going to need an ISP, and you'll have to be physically connected to the wall with the phone line. So I guess the real question is, who is this for? I mean, anyone at the time with an interest in sending emails would have already had a proper computer, and the device itself looks too basic to do anything beyond basic text. I don't even think you can do fonts with this thing. But uh, I'm sure some tech geek in the audience will fill me in. 
the electronic section here is always so depressing. We'll give it an enema. At least it'll give it a sense of accomplishment. Uh-oh. Nobody tell Frank Pachowski. Anyway, the late great Neil Innes had a hat made from a cut-up rubber ducky toy, so I guess the logical progression would be a roast chicken hat. But it's just not the same. And the haul from this store consists of four audio cassettes, Jerry Sleeger Slegger Variety Pack Number 1. Then we've got Lyle Beaver and the Brass Notes with How I Love Those Old Songs. Uh, hey, anybody named Beaver can't be all bad. Then Kurt Braffitt, Braffet, whatever, with Bear Tracks. And a slightly nicotine-smelling copy of The Beatles Abbey Road. Then, found off camera, we've got a clamshell copy of one of the umpteen Macbeth movies on some presumptive public domain label that I've never heard of, which had a change of address at some point. And then we've got the Scotch retaping tape and a bonus cheap crappy Chinese blank. And lastly, found off camera, a two CD soundtrack of sorts from the 1970 Isle of Wight Festival. Getting back into the Goodwill thing here, and uh, hopefully this store has gotten a little better since the last time I was here. In the world's second saddest electronics department, I found a sad DVD player being crushed by an old cheap-looking front projector. But then I actually did find something. Now, I'm perfectly happy with my Cloner Alliance box, but I just had to check out this Viewpoint Digital Video Recorder, and this one records onto SD cards. Now, this looks like it tops out at 480p, or 576 in PAL, and this one looks pretty old. It looks like it runs entirely on composite video gear. The most recent OS listed on the box is Windows Vista, so that would put this in the mid-2000s. And uh, this thing actually kind of reeked of nicotine. But by the same token, it appears to be complete, and it comes with a, as far as I'm concerned, free 16 gig SD card. And you know what? For five bucks, I'll take it. Assuming it works, I can probably get a Benz junk out of it. In the CDs, I came across a real airhead, as in some band from Austin, Texas. I also found another not soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever. Now, I prefer my record ripoffs to be period accurate, but then again, I found ripoff CDs with period recordings on them, so guess that one's going to the record ripoffs candidate pile. Then I found one from the Rhapsody Trio, who apparently played on Carnival Cruise Line ships always the mark of quality, and as tempting as a copy of the L.A. Confidential soundtrack is, it's this one that's got my attention. It's not every day you see a Jewish religious rap CD from a lily-white rapper, no less. But it turns out this guy, uh, one Adam Sif Sif, is a reasonably famous Sioux Falls DJ, though admittedly this is the first I've ever heard of him, and uh, he kind of looks like James Rolfe. But uh, anyway, I found some interesting-looking 8-tracks. So, this country compilation actually comes from Radio Shack, of all places. But the real shocker to me here was this Ford Motors tape. I had no idea that there were ever any cars with quadraphonic systems. Now, this is just a compilation of quad mixes of then-current pop, rock, country, and classical stuff. But I'm getting it anyway. It looks to be in good shape and reparable if needed. Now, I just need a quad deck. Now, getting back to the Radio Shack thing, I've seen this Arthur Fiedler album on vinyl a bunch of times, and the whole idea was that they could cram 90 minutes of material on a single LP, so this being on 8-track just seems kind of self-defeating to me. Then I found a copy of the Commodore's Natural High, which I already have on 8-track, and in roughly the same condition. In the vinyl, it's The Revenge of Marcy, and lord help me, it looks like she made more than one Christmas album. 
I don't know. The one I covered last year was pretty painful. I mean, it would just be cruel of me to cover Marcy two years in a row, right? Anyway, I found a pretty promising-looking KTEL compilation, but it was missing the LP, and otherwise, eh, eh, the usual crap. Except for, uh, isn't this supposed to be a Halloween episode? So yes, I did pick up this somewhat damaged Barbie Christmas album, and yes, I endured some pretty awful looks in the checkout line for it, too. In the puzzles and board games, I found a copy of Operation, probably missing most of the quote-unquote bones, but the real eye-catcher here was the home game of the 80s TV game show version of Scrabble. Uh, alas, Chuck Woolery not included. At two bucks, I'm sure this was a nice find for somebody, but not for me. Well, somewhere a dragon is very angry, more so than usual. Now, I found another McDonald's McPunkin pail, and I've already got this one, complete no less, and this one's got some of those old poofy stickers stuck to it. But uh, you know what? For 50 cents, I'm picking it up anyway. If nothing else, if something happens to my much-treasured McPunkin, I can use this for parts. Well, if you squint just right, it's kind of like standing right next to Gilbert Gottfried. And the haul from this store consists of two Archive Christmas LP candidates, which will probably get me put on some kind of watch list, Barbie Christmas and uh, another Little Marcy Christmas album. Aside from that, we've got the Viewpoint Digital Video Recorder thing, which is probably data compressed as all hell. We've got the Ford Motors Quadraphonic 8-track demo tape. And I also picked up two CDs, a copy of Enya's Shepherd Moons. I've had a copy of her Watermark album and a laser disc of her music videos kicking around forever, so why the hell not? And then we've got that Not Saturday Night Fever soundtrack for the record ripoffs pile. And lastly, a spare 1986 McPunkin trick-or-treat pail, with period poofy stickers on the sides. No, I'm not trying to get a shot of that rusting pickup truck. I just had to park way far out. Again. Well, this is the first cassette boombox I've seen at a proper thrift store in quite some time. I'm sure the thing just performs beautifully. Gotta have the requisite random Xbox controller. Well, this is technically the same model of Polaroid camera that I've already got, it's just a lot older. And if it were a nicer model, I'd have certainly considered it. Then, down on the bottom shelf, I found all the world's remaining basic keyboards that came with your Dell computer back in the mid-2000s. Dude, you got a Dell. In the vinyl, I found a... not record. So, this appears to be the tour program from Alabama's 1985 tour, and apparently worth three bucks. No autographs, no souvenirs, no nothing, but, uh, hey, at least Alabama's fan club was based in you know, Alabama. For the record, I don't hate Alabama. I just find this amusing. Yes, kids, Tammy Faye Baker made some albums, and she was actually a fairly decent, if a kind of Broadway-ish, singer. Oh no. I'm having flashbacks. And I'm suddenly magically wearing a scarf! Yeah, sure, we'll take the three for one glasses special. And of course, there's a lot of religious stuff. Shock of shocks. Wait, another Stan and Doug album? Well, I am legally obligated to pick these up, in some way I've yet to figure out. But uh, they cover Tom Lehrer this time around, so that could be interesting. 
a lot of mystery tapes in the VHS section today. So here's one, apparently, of a church service from Madison, South Dakota. Let's see, a copy of Dante's Peak, and yeah, look at that. And given that it's hopefully got the Country Music Awards on it, hopefully this is an off-air tape, and uh, those tapes are from the 90s. And I actually found a small handful of potentially local off-air tapes, so I grabbed them all. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll ever get away with covering hunting tapes on this show. Ah yes, Goodwill, where memes come to die. As well as failed trends. This selection is pure ass. Well, we've had a McDonald's pail today, so here's one from Runza Restaurants, which I'd never heard of, but this appears to be from the 90s. And so I looked it up, and it appears to be a chain of fast food restaurants, the nearest location being in Wayne, Nebraska, and let's hope they didn't go all the way down to Wayne just for the pail. But uh, yeah, I, I gotta admit, it is kinda cute. Oh yeah, we've had a big problem with spiders around here this year, especially hungover ones. Well, this is a first for Goodwill, in my experience. This is a full Simmons electronic drum kit, and of course my first thought was, okay, what's wrong with it? So I tried it out, and it works fine. I mean, it's the cheesiest sounding thing I've ever heard, but it's solid. They wanted 200 bucks for it, and, uh, well, uh, hey, Nick, your job is secure with me. I did not pick this up. But uh, the idea for me was hopefully I could get a little thrift store karma out of this. I'd rather see this go to a kid, you know, for their first drum kit and one that won't drive his parents crazy. But uh, yeah, majorly cool to see. And the haul from this store consists of two LPs, yet another Stan and Doug album. How many did they make? And a bit of a shocker, the Stax Volt Review Volume 2, with Otis Redding, Carla Thomas, Sam and Dave, and Eddie Floyd, and in spite of the shrink wrap, in excellent condition. A CD of Kenny Loggins' High Adventure, some prime yacht rock there, and four hopefully local, hopefully off-air VHS tapes, probably from the latter half of the 90s. Well, I think I got me a nice little haul this time. I got four LPs, two of which are Archive Christmas Candidates. I got to yet another Stan and Doug album, and the fluke good LP of the lot, the Stax Volt Review Volume 2. Then I got the Viewpoint Digital Video Recorder. As already mentioned, if it works, you'll probably see a Ben's junk on it at some point. Then I got a total of four CDs, all but one of which are not archive candidates. Then I got the Ford Motors Quadraphonic Demo 8 track from about 1976. Then uh, we had a great day for audio cassettes. Eight tapes, all but the Beatles album being archive candidates, and also a good day for VHS. I found seven tapes, one for the public domain cult candidate pile, four hopefully local off-air used blanks, and two sealed blanks. And I'm only going to record on that scotch one once, just to be a rebel. And last but not least, a 1986 McDonald's McPunkin trick-or-treat pail. And the cost of this haul came out to about $30. And that's it for this archive thrifting. I'll talk to you again soon.